Hey, this is Voxide, and if you want to learn Houdini, you can check out my in-depth courses. Link will be in the description. Hey, I want to show you a couple of ways in which you can grow an attribute on a geometry. So whenever you want to do uh, some sort of propagation effects, you can use either of these techniques. Basically, there are a few ways in which you can do this, but mainly one of the ways is using a solver, and the other way is by not using a solver, so it's not going to be reliant on a simulation. And let's start with the non-solver way first, because it's a super easy setup, and I don't really see a lot of people doing it. And and this non-solver method will cover really a lot of cases, maybe like 90% of cases in which you want to grow an attribute on a surface. So let's go ahead and I'll just drop down a geo container and we will use the pig head to demonstrate all of this. And let's maybe just drop down a subdivide. So we might want to add a little bit more resolution to this. And what we want to start with is a attribute that grows in a certain way. So you can achieve this in various ways ways and I will uh, showcase a few of them but for now let's just drop down a distance along geometry plug this here and let's select a start point and I'll just select maybe this point over here all right and I'll press enter and now this outputs a dist attribute which is basically from the point that which uh, we selected so the start point let's say this is the start point it will simply measure the edge length between this point and the point next to it and then maybe for this point so if it starts here this other point next to it will output the length of this edge and this point will output the length of this edge plus this edge here and so on so this point here will be this edge this edge and this edge and basically we can go check and we can see that this goes from 0 all the way to something around a value of 3. These values here specifically aren't really important to us. The only thing that matters is that this attribute, this is a growing attribute. So we can see that it goes from 0 and it nicely and evenly, pretty much evenly increments all the way over to this value over here. Okay, so what we can do from here is we can drop down an attribute VOP and inside here let's import our dist attribute so this is the one that we generated with the distance along geometry and I can simply plug this inside a ramp and we can plug the ramp let's maybe make some room and I will just plug this directly inside the CD and I will set this to be a spline ramp go up let's reset the ramp and this will be the result okay so we can uh, reverse this ramp and so right over here where our point has a dist uh, value near to zero all the way over to maybe the furthest po point in this geometry so maybe around here will be 2.8 again these values aren't really important all that matters is that, that this is an attribute that increases along the surface so let's maybe step inside and before we plug this into the ramp let's maybe fit this attribute so I'll drop down a fit range and I want to promote this source max over here. So if I go up and I select a value of uh, for the source max, let's set this to 2.8. This should now pretty much create a gradient uh, across the whole geometry. So now what we can do is let's maybe set this maximum source. Let's maybe turn this down a bit and let's, uh, let's tighten up this gradient a bit. And what I can do and this is the core pretty much of this technique is we can simply before we do this fit we can do we can drop down an add and I will just promote the second value here and maybe I can rename this to let's say offset and for the source max here inside the fit I will just rename this to width okay so if I go up and now I play around with this offset we will see that we are we are going to push the values inside or out. So if I increase this value, if I increase this value, uh, this will go in. And if I decrease this value, this will go outside. And you can see that with this, we can just simply animate this parameter and we can create a simple propagating attribute that uh, goes across the whole geometry, like so. So we can now play around with this width here and let's maybe do a keyframe for the offset. So I'll go to the start uh, to the first frame and I will just uh, increase this until we can, uh, until everything is black, basically. All right, so I'll add a keyframe here. I'll go to 120 and I will decrease this value until we encapsulate the whole geometry. 
okay and we might have to readjust these keyframes a bit and maybe I'll press shift click and I'll grab these keyframes and I'll make them linear so now here we have our simple uh, the base of the propagation basically okay so pretty simple and uh, okay so from here we can go back inside and instead of simply adding uh, an offset value that controls pretty much this fade we can now add some noise to this as well so from the position of the points I'll drop down a turbulent noise and maybe I'll use simplex noise and we will simply add this to our distance so where we add our offset uh, parameter okay and here we have it so automatically we just uh, add some noise uh, this easily so maybe I can promote the frequency amplitude and roughness for this and we can go up and now we can mess around and maybe I can uh, tighten this up a bit by decreasing the width okay just uh, be mindful that when you readjust this width you might have to readjust the keyframes for the offset values but in this case it's fine so let's go ahead here and I can simply increase the amplitude to add more noise I can increase the frequency you can of course animate the noise so maybe uh, for my let's go to the offset and promote the offset as well and for let's animate this noise maybe in the y direction so here uh, I will just say dollar sign T and now we also have some uh, animation for the noise all right let's maybe get rid of this and keep this static so we can notice some stretching here and this is because we are applying this effect on the geometry so on the points of the geometry and from and after this distance along geometry we can actually drop down a scatter and we can scatter some points and the points will have the interpolated result of this distance attribute so for example if we have a distance here of 0 and this has a distance of 1 a point scattered in the middle will have a distance of 0 0.5 and over here maybe it will have uh, 0 0.25 so it will automatically interpolate this distance attribute so we can scatter as many points as we want let's uh, turn down relax iteration and I'll go with maybe let's go with 1 million okay and everything should be updated and it's it will still work uh, as it did with the geometry and we can see that this is updating in real time and we don't have to wait for any simulations and stuff like that and we have a lot of control over this look so we can control the noise we can control the weight and we can also control this ramp so we can also do a lot of cool interesting effects here as well and this is just to maybe give you an example so uh, really this gives you a lot of control and for a lot of case I, you can see here that as I adjusted this width now maybe I will have to go and edit this offset so if I go in my keyframe window here maybe I will have to readjust some of these keyframes a bit let's maybe reset this ramp back and uh, you can do the fade out let's uh, reverse this and you can layer uh, a bunch of noises here so maybe we can let's drop down a Voronoi noise and from the seed I will create a random uh, attribute and if I plug this into the CD we can preview how this looks and maybe I'll increase the frequency okay so just uh, create a bunch of clusters here and maybe I will also drop down another turbulent noise and I'll make this a 3D noise and I want to use this inside the offset so maybe I can increase the frequency here and we can see that uh, you kind of combine uh, the Voronoi with a little bit of uh, regular turb uh, turbulence uh, noise so this is width without the turbulent noise inside the offset and this is width the turbulent noise okay so maybe I can increase the frequency even further here and uh, we can simply now add this let's see if we just add this directly inside our so this is the main add node that drives all of the effects so distance goes inside this add and everything goes inside this add as well so let's uh, let's plug back the ramp inside the CD all right and this will be the result so maybe I can fit this value here so this goes from 0 to 1 
and I might want to decrease the max here. And you can play around with the settings and uh, really see what kind of effects the, that you can get. So now we also add a little bit of uh, clustering. We can add more or less of this. We can increase the turbulent noise. So hopefully this will give you an idea of, uh, of how you can use this technique. And like I said, you only need an increasing value for this to work. So in this case, we use the distance along geometry, which outputs this dist attribute. Uh, you can also use uh, the cost attribute. The cost attribute is kind of similar to this. So if I drop a find shortest path, we can uh, select some start points here. So maybe I'll select, let's maybe select multiple ones. So I'll select this one and this one and this one okay and we want to we don't want to output paths and we want this to be from any start to each end and we only need the cost attribute okay so we will drop down uh we will drop this inside the scatter and let's go back to the attribute vop and uh we no longer have this this attribute instead we have the cost attribute so we have replaced the cost attribute here and it starts from the start points that we cre we selected. And uh, let's maybe just adjust some of these settings a little bit. I will maybe want less clustering and we can maybe use less noise for this. So whatever value you have, whatever attribute you have here that's increasing, you can just keep adding noises to add more variation and detail to the transition. And uh, so that's using the cost attribute. We can also use the relative position of the object. So we can do a, from the P here, we will drop down a relative to bounding box and this gives me a vector. I will split this, so vector to float and we want to use maybe the Y direction and I'll just plug this directly inside the head and we can see that this is the result. So the increasing attribute in this case will be, so this uh, relative to bounding box, uh, we can imagine that if we drop this inside a bound, it sort of creates this box. So it will place all of the points inside this box and it will give me a value relative to this box. So maybe the lowest point in the y direction is over here and this will be a value of zero and maybe the highest point in this in the y direction here will be this point uh, around the ear so this will be one and anything in between will be between zero and one so it's going to it's going to go up from zero all the way up to one. So this is using the relative to b box. Uh, we can also drop down and add and we can just create a point here which I will, let's maybe preview the geometry. So maybe I will, pl I will uh, place this point somewhere. Let's do another part. So I'll place this point here and we can drop this inside the second input for my attribute VOP. And uh, we want to import the position. So I will, so from this op input two, I will drop down an import point attribute. And we want to measure the distance from the, the position of this point to the rest of the geometry. So from this, this P here, I will drop down a distance and we want to measure from this position to our point position and I will plug this inside the head. So we have to promote here the PTNUM in order for this to work, all right? So now it works. So we have a point that's over here and we measure the distance. So in this case, the distance will be the increasing attribute and this will work as well. So again, all you need here is a, uh, an attribute, an increasing attribute, and then you add to this attribute a uniform value. So in this case, this offset over here, which just pushes everything outwards, and then you modify this value with noises. And then you can fit the value to increase the width or this decrease the width and finally you plug this into a ramp and what's important to note here is that this ramp also clamps the values from 0 to 1 so if I go to my geometry spreadsheet you can see that the colors never 
passes a value of 1 or goes below 0. So again, you can use the ramp and you can really create some interesting effects. So this is the non-simulation method and this uh, will this should pretty much cover a lot of your needs and I use this pretty much 95% of the time. And then there is also the solver technique which uh, everybody seems to be using that uses either uh, either the near point function or the PC open functions and let's maybe showcase that technique as well. So I will go ahead and let's delete all of this and I'll drop down a scatter and this really works best on uh, uh, points. So maybe I'll just uh, let's increase this. Let's maybe use 500,000 and I'll disable the max points. Okay, so we have a bunch of points here. And the case for the solver method is when you want something that's kind of a lot more specific. So for example, I want the simulation to grow in a line that goes something like this. So let's maybe, let's go to the geometry and I'll press S and I want to grab some of the edges here. Maybe I'll grab this one. I'll press Shift A, I'll hold down Shift A and I'll just select uh, a group of edges here. I'll press Tab and drop down a group node. Alright, so this will be this group over here and there is a node that's called Group to Labs Edge Group to Curve which will simply grab a group of edges and it will uh, turn it into a curve. So I can drop down a resample from here and maybe I will decrease the length and just add a bunch of points to this curve and we also we want to animate this curve growing like this so I will drop down a curve and I will start at a value of 1 and maybe at 120 I'll set this to 0 so now it's simply growing let's press shift click here and I'll make this linear Okay, so what we want to do is for this scatter we will use an attribute transfer and we want the growth to grow sort of following this line. So let's drop down a solver. Okay, so this will be the solve the first input will be the scatter points and the second input will be my curve. So inside this uh, solver I'll drop down an attribute transfer and we will point to our input 2. So this is our line over here and let's drop down an output as well. So we want the points and we want the CD. We actually didn't set up the color yet so let's go ahead. Uh, for my scatter I want, I will drop down a color and I will set this to be black and I'll copy this over and I'll set this to be white. So the so the curve is white, so the points on the curve is white and the points on the uh, pig head are black. Okay, so let's go back inside the solver and now this should work. So right away uh, the distance for the attribute transfer is too high so let's go in the conditions here and I'll just decrease this to maybe uh, let's do 0 0.05 okay and let's reset. Okay, so here we have uh, our transfer and so we have the initial white points and what uh, we want to happen is whenever a uh, black point around these white points so whenever one of these points for the pig head will find a point next to it that's white I want that point to turn itself white and let's maybe just decrease the threshold here so it's just a little bit thinner let's maybe use 0 0.01 okay so something like this so I've seen uh, a lot of people using the near point functions and a bunch of VEX code. Uh, I think you can do all of that with just a simple PC open inside an attribute VOP and hopefully this will be a little bit more easier to understand as well because the VEX methods really gets a little bit convoluted and I usually prefer using attribute VOPs uh, most of the time. So here we have the attribute VOP and let's play the simulation a bit and we want to put these white points to the side so from here I will drop down a blast and we will say group type will be points and we want 
if the color is bigger than zero then I want to separate this and I will turn on delete uh, non-selected okay so we only filter out the white points in this stream and I will plug this inside the second input of this attribute VOP so we want to generate a point cloud using these points here and we want to generate it from the position of all of the other points and we want to generate it from the position of all of the points inside of this peak head so inside this attribute VOP let's drop down a PC open so this is point cloud open and like I said from the position of all of the points we will look at our white points so I will make the file point to our op input 2 and again these are just the white points so we will open a point cloud on the white points from the position of our pig head points and it will look inside this search radius which is currently 0.1 and I will actually promote this radius and we will adjust this later and from this handle I want to drop down a PC filter and we want the channel that we want to filter to be the color and then this value here I will plug inside the CD okay so this already updated and what happens here is let's maybe go back and let's uh, play a bit and so this is what happens and this is uh, we can see that everything is growing super fast and this is because this uh, search radius by default is too high so maybe I'll set this to 0 0.01 and let's take a look so this is kind of what we want to happen and uh, just take note here that if you make the search radius too small so if I go 0 0.001 the distance might be too small and it won't be big enough to find a uh, the points next to each other in order for this effect to happen so we can see that this doesn't work let's maybe go to 0 0.05 too much 0 0.005 and still a little bit too small let's maybe just set this back to 0 0.01 and I think this will be fine for now so what happens is that let's maybe turn this off for a second uh, we have the white points here which we separate over here and when we look at our the points of the peak head what happens is that whenever uh, a black point we look around all of the points surrounding it in this search radius and if it finds enough points that are white it's going to turn itself white as well so this is what this uh, PC filter will do so let's say that maybe one of these black points if it finds five surrounding points next to it and three of them are white is going to return this value of white and we will set the point to white so hopefully that uh, makes sense okay so let's turn this back and let's see let's play the simulation a bit so we can see that this is now following the curve that we created so in this way you can really direct the way that this growth effect is happening so you could have multiple curves and you can have uh, at or attributes and uh, you can really have a lot more control over the propagation this way one of the problems that's uh, happening here is that as I play the simulation uh, so let's maybe play the simulation we can see we are ru running roughly 12 frames and as this simulation progresses we are running less and less frames and this is because each time we are increasing how many white points we have and the PC open basically has to consider a lot more points each time so this will uh, increase this will decrease the speed of the simulation as this simulation progresses so the more white points we start to have the slower the simulation will be and one way that we can fix this is we can actually also increment these points so the second they turn white we also want to start uh, aging them so we can drop down an attribute wrangle here and we can simply say that if your color is bigger than zero then we will set your age to be plus equals one then this uh, gives me an error and let's just uh, add a dot x over here so we will just separate the first component of the color vector okay so basically whenever you turn white your you will start uh, increasing your age and because the points after they turn white they remain white this will just keep incrementing over time 
So now what I can do is after this blast node we can say, so this blast, blast node is saying that only keep the white points and then we can also add another blast point here and we can say only keep the points that have uh, an age less than maybe 35. And let's set this to delete non-selected. Okay, so let's play this and we can see that this is the result now. So if I go to this blast stage, uh, they start turning white, so they start incrementing their age. And when this age is larger than 35, then they will no longer be considered here. So uh, after frame 35, we can see that they start to disappear. Now the problem here is that this affects our PC open. So like I said, for each point, if there are not enough points surrounding it that are white, it, it will not be white itself, it will turn itself black because there are more black points surrounding it. So what we can do here to fix this is we can say, we can go inside here and we can grab the current color. So this is before any modifications are taking place and I'll drop down a maximum node. So I'll plug the color inside this, the first input and this PC filter result, I'll plug this into the second input and then I'll plug this inside the CD. So what this is saying basically is that if your color was already white, then remain white. And when we rerun the simulation, now all of the points are staying white as they should. So if we, we want to make this slower, we will just decrease this search radius. So maybe let's do 0.05. The problem here is, like we mentioned earlier, is that this distance is too small between the points and the points no longer find each other. So let's set this back to 0 0.01 and uh, let me show you another way in which you can kind of slow down the simulation. We can basically make it harder for our points to turn white, so we can add a condition here. So let's go back inside and from the PTNum I will generate a random number and we can do a condition here. So I want to compare this number. So let's drop down a compare and we will say greater than and let's use maybe 0 0.05. So for all of the points, we will uh, generate a random number that goes from zero to one and 50% of all of these points should be bigger than 0 0.5 and I only want those points to be considered for our simulation. So all of the points that are that have a random value bigger than 0 0.1 will return a value of 1 and all of the points that uh, are not bigger than 0 0.1 will return a value of 0. So I can simply multiply this PC filter value here so whatever color we receive from this PC filter, we want to multiply it with the result of this compare, which is either zero or one, based on if it meets the condition or not. So now only 50% of the points should be considered. So if I play the simulation now, we can see that only 50% of the points are turning black, are turning white rather. And what I can do from here, is we can change the seed of this random value that is being generated here. So I'll drop down and add before the random from our PTNum and I will add the frame number to this add. Okay, so as a result, let's maybe go to the output and let's maybe step outside to the solver level and let's take a look. So we can kind of see that this is a little bit slower, but because we are generating a new random value every frame, a lot more points will be considered now. So maybe inside this uh, attribute VOP, I can go to this compare and uh, let's maybe compare it to a greater value. So let's make this value uh, have to be bigger than 0 0.9. Okay, so uh, let's play this. And now this is the result. So we are also changing the seed, but we are giving it a much a much bigger threshold that the point has to reach in order to be considered. So this is the result. Let's maybe go up. Okay, so now uh, we successfully slowed down the simulation. And let's go back inside and maybe as uh, one last thing, let's also add a little bit of noise to this as well. So I will go ahead and I'll duplicate this entire geometry VOP here and let's drop down a turbulent noise and we created a condition here that's based on a random number for each point let's create a condition based on the value that the turbulence uh, noise will give us so if i plug this directly inside the cd 
this is the result and let's, let's use a simplex noise and maybe increase the frequency. If I look at the geometry spreadsheet we can see this is plugged inside the color and the values go from 0.2 all the way to negative 0.25 roughly. So 0.25 and negative 0.25. So let's maybe do a condition here and say only consider the points that have a value greater than zero. So if we set this to be greater than zero, we can see that this essentially uh, all, only these places are where the points are, are going to be allowed to expand. So I want to multiply this PC filter with the result of this compare the same way that we did with the random one. And if I plug this into the CD, we can see that this will be the result. And again, we would have to also do the maximum values. So we will plug this here where our, where our other result was inside the maximum value. So we want to look at our CD and uh, use the maximum value between the current CD and the result of this uh, noise thing. So let's plug this inside the CD. Okay, so this is the result. And we can, of course, go to this uh, noise and we will want to promote the parameter and we just want to animate this noise maybe in the Y direction. So I'll just drop down a dollar sign T expression here. So the result will be something like this. And now the noise is animating as well. And maybe we want to increase this offset a little bit. So I'll multiply this by two. So the noise will move a little bit faster. So this will be the result. And we can now mix all of these together. So we can mix the condition that we set for the turbulent noise and the condition from the random. So I'll just plug this inside the maximum and whatever comes first, uh, that, uh, that will make the point white. So the final result will be something like this. Okay, so we also have a little bit of noise and the uh, points continuous, continuously expand based on that uh, random value that we did. As you can see, slightly more complicated. And I will put this project file uh, for you to take a look and see exactly how I set up all of the nodes in case I miss something. So go ahead and download this uh, if you want to experiment with this, if you want to experiment with this technique. And of course, since the points are aging here, so we have this age. Uh, let's take a look. So we have the age that keeps incrementing. We can also do further adjustments outside of the solver. So we, since we have the age already, we can go inside this attribute VOP and I'll bind the age. And let's fit the value here. Let's uh, promote the source max. And I'll drop this inside a ramp and the ramp inside the CD and we will use spine, spline float, reset the ramp and if I increase this maximum value for the source, let's maybe use 50, uh, we can see that we also, we can create, we can uh, control the fade of this growth effect. And we can of course grab our ramp and we can start having some fun. So we can do all kinds of uh, effects here. We can increase the width. And hopefully this gives you uh, an idea of some of the stuff that you can do. So all kinds of stuff. And you can of course, uh, let's maybe just drop down a color here, do ramp from attribute CD and use some of these gradients here. Right, so something like this. So you can spread fire. And uh, yeah, this took the, let's maybe from this group, let's select another line. Select maybe some more lines. Okay, and uh, let's see if all of these update. Okay, so all of these update and so we have more control over our growth. But yeah, I mean, uh, this doesn't really make sense. I mean, you can kind of see this line going in this direction here. We might have to adjust some of the settings here. 
let's see if I can get the line to stay a little bit more so we can we can pretty much slow down the simulation by making it harder for our points to meet their conditions so inside the solver I can increase the value here to compare so maybe 0 0.95 and maybe this one can go to 0 0.1 so now <coughs> all of the points should have a harder time uh, turning themselves white basically and maybe this is probably too much but this is kind of cool I think let's maybe go back inside the solver and this is where it kind of starts uh, being fun uh, the tutorial is pretty much over <laughs> but uh, yeah if you want to hang around and see me adjust some of the settings then uh, feel free to do so um, all right so now we can kind of have a better idea of how the lines uh, are going So like I mentioned earlier, this will give you a lot more control. This isn't something that you can really do with having uh, increasing attributes. So you can still, maybe for this, you can still inside here, uh, after we fit the age, you can still drop down a uh, noise and maybe adjust, add a, a little bit more noise outside of the, on top of uh, everything, basically and uh, play around with some of these settings and maybe also promote the offset and uh, let's uh, see this so we have some noise going in uh, this direction uh, it doesn't look that great, but yeah, anyway, uh, I think I covered everything that I wanted to to cover, so, and I hope this gives you some ideas for some uh, setups that you may have. Once again, I will leave the download link for the project, so go ahead and download this if you got stuck anywhere, and I'll see you in another video.